It is sophomore night as the Eastern Florida State College men's soccer team takes on Broward College in a Region 8 conference showdown. Live from the Titan Soccer Complex on the Melbourne campus, it's the Titans and the Seahawks, and it's next. We are set to start your weekend off with some college soccer. Penultimate game of the regular season for the 11th-ranked Eastern Florida State College Titans. We're at the Titans Soccer Complex. Light rain falling as the Titans looking to take two, take the second of two games this season against their rivals from Broward College. Good evening and welcome, everybody, alongside Tom Sermani, head coach of the Orlando Pride and former U.S. Women's National Team head coach. I'm Jeff Radcliffe. Thank you so much for joining us once again on WEFS TV for Titans Soccer. And tonight, Tom, uh, two teams in opposite directions, a team that's won five in a row and a team that has lost five in a row, and really a team that can score goals and a team that can't. Yeah, and uh, so you'd say from that matchup, but uh, it should be a fairly straightforward game for, yes. it's for, never that for simple Titans. Though. But football, unfortunately, as we all know, soccer's not quite that simple. It's not simple math ever. As the Seahawks, two and five, one and three on the season, they do have some threatening players, especially on the outside. Number 11, Alberto Chavarria is a player to watch. Yeah, very talented player. Uh, you know, gifted with the ball and, and somebody that could cause some problems tonight for the Titans. So be on notice. On the other side, guy who trying to set a record for goal scoring, and that's Danilo Orsi de Domo. Yeah, 14 goals already this season, which ties uh, the, the Titans' record. And, and a couple of games to go, I'm sure he'll be very keen to get on the score sheet tonight and break that record. 28 goals for the sophomore, one of eight that will be playing their final home game here tonight. Here are the starting lineups. On the left, you see Broward College. The uh, goalkeeper out of Miami is Michael Ortega. Uh, and another player to watch is number nine, Lewis Dillon, three goals, two assists. That leads Broward. Eastern Florida will be in at 4 2 3 1. Notre Donato is back at Keeper, Sh Keeper Scherer, and Dixon are the outside backs. Myers Torkowski in the center of the defense. Uh, Mickey George and Abdul Idrisu are the holding mids, and it will be Heim Rosary on the right, uh, Alex Alexis on the left, and Oliver Lowe in the hole, and, of course, Orsi Domo up top. Okay. Here are the two coaches. On your right, Oliver 12 trees now in his fourth season. On the other side, Munga Ekatebi, who guided FIU for so many years, from 2007 to 2011. In fact, a big player for the Panthers, 50 career goals as a player still, the all-time leading scorer at the South Florida School. And a big personality down Miami way, <laughs> That's I right. believe. Certainly. Uh, speaking of personality, Sam Gillespie is the referee. He'll be... Assisted by Eden Kapichik and Herver Castano. So the, the teams uh, being introduced now. It will be uh, Eastern Florida in the home whites, the, the very uh, Vancouver Whitecap-esque jerseys tonight. And it will be Broward on the left in the dark blue, two schools with essentially the same color scheme. So what's the key if you're Broward? You have a chance here, Tom. Uh, the, yeah. the, the goal is to finish in the top three in the four-team yeah. conference to be able to make that conference tournament. One win in their last two, and they'll be able, they'll be yeah. able to do that. So a, the, I suppose the dilemma you have in that situation as a, as a coach and a team is do you go out and try and win the game, or do you go out, which I would probably more likely to do, go out and say initially, let's make sure we, we keep things tight and don't go behind, because obviously a team that don't score a lot of goals, so the last thing they want to do away from home against the top team in, the, in the, the conference, a team that scores a lot of goals, is go behind early. A rematch of a game won by Eastern Florida down in Pembroke Pines on the 26th of September. It was a 4-1 win for Eastern Florida on that night. Eastern Florida coming off its most impressive win of the season against the seventh-ranked Daytona State on Tuesday, 5-1 on the road as they debuted their new stadium. And uh, Eastern Florida gave them a, a rude debut at their stadium. Not a great way to open a new stadium. <laughs> no. no, Eastern Florida was uh, gave, giving a little payback as they lost 2-1 uh, to one on their home field uh, back in September here. So now we're back in the driver's seat on goal differential to take Region 8 once again. you got to finish with two wins. It starts tonight and then on the road at uh, ASA on Wednesday night. Yeah, and they're in great form. You know, the results, scoring goals, winning games. So... 
um, you would think that they should be able to go on and, and do the job tonight. So glad to have you along. Final huddles uh, here for each side. And Brown are trying to turn around a five game losing streak, a streak in which they've scored just four goals. In fact, eight goals all season. That's less a goal, uh, a goal per game. Uh, Eastern Florida has scored 43 and 10. So scoring has not been a problem, but uh, one of the things I think Coach 12 threes wanted to work on in recent weeks was uh, keeping the clean sheets, and they've done that. They've had three in their last five. Yeah, and that's, that's always important as well. Getting set for kickoff here as the sun's starting to come out just a minute of time. Be Broward to attack left to right here. They will kick off. It will be Lewis Dillon, the Englishman, one of two players on the roster from Stoke Newington Secondary. As Munga, like Oliver Twelve Trees, likes to recruit from around the world. Yeah, it's amazing that the rosters in these colleges are very international. You see that really at all levels nowadays, yeah. too. Yeah. Great opportunities to get your education if you're an international player and, yeah. and continue your soccer career. Immediately, Brower being proactive on the front foot here. Right. Nicely done to uh, be cleared out. And the throw will come on the near side for Andre De Novi Diaz, who is the right fullback. And quickly to Dillon, trying to get a turn. Chased out of trouble down the line. Orsi Dodomo won't be able to get on as you got a couple of big center backs. Roby Orbstar, 6'2", and Sebastian Podgates. And we are not quite sure. We apologize for the poor pronunciation on that one. Six and 16, who you need to watch out for. <laughs> the wry <laughs> smile from Tom Sermani as I attempted that name. I'll just do it in a Scottish accent. <laughs> Won't confuse anybody. <laughs> Immediately, it's Abdul Idrisu. Uh, soccer commentating is always difficult with the international names, right? Uh, yeah, it certainly is. Marcy Domo and Oliver Lowe trying to get on the attack as Broward has kept most of the ball here in the opening minute or two. There's Podgetz. Bringing it to Denovi Diaz from Caracas, Venezuela. Right up the line. No problem for Max Schur, the German, the sure-footed one here on the left, wearing the pink boots, can't miss those. Yeah. yeah. Strange these days, <laughs> multicolored <laughs> boots. Yeah, back it was black or white, right? That's all you have that was it. Playing that was it. And if you had colored boots, you had to be a very, very good player. <laughs> Had to be Brazilian or something. Yes, exactly. Worked out left flank. Very proactive start here for Broward College. They need the victory. And now we'll leave it to the right side. Alexis Corp, another Frenchman on the roster. Cleaned up by Mickey George and going the other way quickly with Oliver Lowe. Lowe out of Vallingby, Sweden. Touched by Dodomo. Will be a throw here. A promising start by Broward. They, they're in a good position there. Unfortunately, Cross just went behind the strikers. Orb star. A star from Slovenia. Switches it to Colazos. Dropping to pick it up is Theo Georgien. Two Frenchmen on the roster. And continuing to keep the possession here, much to the chagrin of Oliver Twelve Trees. Yeah, they made a, a promising start, brother. They look quite composed on the ball and, and confident to actually pass it around. So they yeah. don't look like a team at this stage that's uh, been on a losing streak. And again, Tom, college aged kids are coming off a victory 5 1 against a, a bitter rival and uh, the team you're battling for the top of the conference. There's always seems to be a little bit of a letdown after that when you. Well, the, the, the question is, how long does that last? Exactly. And uh, it's to say the game can change depending on, you know, if, if, uh, if the Titans can score an early goal, that can change the game. And again, if, if Brothers get the early goal, that can mm -hmm. start putting the pressure on the Titans. You can draw comparisons to. 
the U.S. men's national team uh, exactly. had no problem yeah. with Panama, and then we all know what happened on Tuesday. Yeah. And that's why you can never take anything for granted in this game. Gracious, yeah. Came out with the same starting lineup against Trinidad and Tobago and got burnt. And had nothing to play for. But, they had but, but the, the, the game of football is ripe with those stories, right? It is. Yeah. Oh, everywhere. Everywhere. And let me say, Scotland has a lot of them. <laughs> right <laughs> I think Ireland would, would argue Fair with you too well, yes there's the Novi Diaz Corp Hog Hogetz to Colazos more feistiness now is Haim Rosary Trying to keep it from advancing, unable to do so. Just six minutes in. Eastern Florida, eight and two overall, three and one in conference play. This win here on the home field in the home finale would go a long way from securing the top seed. And I think it's always great to win your, your last the last game at home. That's always very, very important, even sort of leading into next season. Dummy there from Alexis that didn't find anybody. Marcy de Domo. Titans trying to find some tricks. Into touch. Throw from Rosary. Uh, has had some brilliant moments this season, the Canadian. See if they can unleash him. Marcy de Domo. Chase comes from Rosary. Plenty of pace, stops on a dime. Nice job getting it to Corp. Who uh, takes a beating from Schurer. And the referee Sam Gillespie may uh, have some dirty work to do and throws the yellow up here in the early going and that hurts. That does hurt, you don't want a, a card this early in the game, particularly as an aggressive fullback. So. Athletic German into the book. Oh, yeah, just a little, a little late. late. A little bit late. I don't know if it's a yellow card this quite this early in the game, but um, I won't argue with Sam. He was quite often the fourth official in the NWSL this year, so he, he's probably happy to be out there and not see me on the bench. <laughs> Be getting taking charge of this game early on. So, you saw Hakeem Reed come in in the college game. You pick up a yellow, you go to the bench immediately for uh, undefined amount of time. Could be a little, could be a lot. Depends on the coach. You could be sub right back in if need be. Yeah, you have to go to the bench oh. if with a yellow. Okay, I didn't know that. But you, you only have so many re-entries per half. Okay, so that. So he may be done for a little while. Okay. So. Oh, so it does hurt you. I didn't realize is, that rule. Is, yeah, the, the, or Americans like to change the game. That's, that's how we are. Well, it's, it's actually <laughs> maybe not a bad rule for for college. For, for kids, <laughs> but it can hurt you. So you don't pick up a second quickly. Yeah. So what have you used all your interchange? Uh, and then you're playing a person down, I think. That's a good question. That's a good question, yeah. I don't. I can't say I've ever. I've done a lot of college games. I've never seen it happen. No. The coaches save at least one of those for that, changes yeah. for that reason. Yeah. Oliver Lowe and Broward still on the front foot. That one over the line. Uh, Keem Reed checked in a moment ago in for Scherer, the sophomore out of Jacksonville. Fleming Highland High School product. Torkowski knocks it in. Good to see Bryce Nordonato back out there making his seventh start. He's been dealing with some back issues. Mickey George dropping deeper and deeper as Eastern Florida trying to get a foothold in this game. Step slow. Boston the midfield once more and now turned over. Twarkowski. 
going out of Melbourne Beach. Former state champion at Melbourne High School, Oliver Lowe, the Swede, and had it ripped away. The thief was Jesus Martinez out of Palmetto, Florida. George will keep it going. Uh, Reese Myers wearing 18 tonight. A couple of jersey number changes, if you're wondering. Alexis not wearing 18, he's wearing 12. Sure on 17. Some ripped jerseys we were hearing. Left them with no choice to switch numbers on some of them. Somebody didn't do the job in the wash, maybe. <laughs> or sewing. Or sewing, yeah. Adrisu, now George, trying to spring something as Alexis got a foot to it. Now Rosary on the ball, very active offensive player, keeps running. Alexis onto the right oh. foot and scores! Alex Alexis! He says when nothing goes right, go left. At that time he took the right foot and scored his fourth goal of the season. Uh, uh, terrific break, great, great pace. I thought he was probably going to take it on his left foot there, but cutting back inside, defenders. <laughs> probably we'll look back and think we should have just kept showing them away from goal but uh, that was a great a great incisive break um, good pace good composure at the end and a great finish if rosary gets the assist you think he would on that break that be his 12th assist that'll be a season record for an eastern florida player as we look at how it came right down the pipe well yeah. taken yeah great finish goalkeeper got no chance with those Tega's 14th goal allowed this season. And Broward now chasing a 1-0 game. And that's what makes it difficult when you're um, a team that's been losing games. As we say, we, you don't want to cough up a, a, an early goal. And that's probably from the first attack that uh, yes. the Titans have had. Yeah, you know, they've basically not been up the field at all. Against the run of play for yeah. sure. And now caught up field, one in the middle trying to find Dylan. Good defensive cover there. Well, you're always most vulnerable right after you score a goal, right? And that's is that true at every level and every gender? Every level, every level. Um, you know, you switch off. Uh, it's it's one of the the angst of coaches to make sure your team doesn't switch off. They they celebrate the goal, but then get immediately switched on, get back in, get organised, and make sure you don't uh, give the opposition yeah. any kind of initiative. Low to George, who's really protected that back line all season. Alexis again on the move. Or Dresu that time, and then inside the box. How about Rosary? He gave it a go with that powerful left foot. You don't know where he generates the power. One back by Reed sends it to center. Nice yes. run there by Vashiko Dixon, I believe, on the back side. I much just seen uh, some of the weapons that the Titans have with that pace and that mobility uh, in midfield and going forward. Misfiring there, can't find Reed as we take a look at the little run on that outside. It was Dixon. Yeah, was a chance. Keeper did well, stayed on his feet. Got his body, big body in the way, so it was good goalkeeping. Back to Georgian. Now Martinez. Florian Laura. Lore. Cut in. Help comes. The Nobi Diaz. Here's the service across. Trying to make a turn. Instead, leaving it back. Big win there by Dixon once more. He's off and running. So Alexis couldn't quite get there. Really Caught. important challenge that on the edge of the box. It's one of you lose, then you. 
really good chance for the oppositional score. And if you mistime it, you're Mist leaving a free kick or worse yeah. a penalty. Yep, and you're getting another yellow card. <laughs> <laughs> minutes in now, 1-0 to the good for the Titans, looking for their ninth win of the season. Off to a good start it's on the scoreboard, though against the run of play it hasn't been all roses, but it has been Heim Rosary with the assist on that goal from Alexis. And now, they're trying to poke it through. Nice job by Denovi Diaz. I think the difference so far that I've seen in the teams is that uh, the Titans just have got that ability and that mobility to, to change pace up in the final third, and that creates some real problems for the uh, the brother defence. Seahawks and lose it at midway. George, Oliver Lowe, now Reed. And I'll cycle it back. This guy looking awful gray <laughs> out to the, to the south, <laughs> the southeast as we look towards the coast. Hopefully the wind's blowing in the right direction to keep it away. Didn't expect any foul weather, maybe a little rain. Here's Alexis oh, again with a full head of steam. Alex Alexis able to get it away. Now cleaned up by Ivan Colazos out of Homestead. One on one. And it'll be in behind for a goal kick. Oh, <laughs> just high steps. Great quick feet. He he looks a real a real handful. He's not the biggest physically, but certainly very good on the ball. A lot of space, switch to the near side. Andre Denovi Diaz has freely gotten down this right flank tonight. Low. Runs into traffic. Getting it away to George. Make that a Drisu. Abdul leaves it right. Low, quick spin. Rosary. Back to Reed. Plays a square ball to George. Danilo. Looking to become the all time single season scoring leader if he can get his 15th goal of the season here tonight. He's on the ball. And we'll let oh, it fly yeah. right on cue. Danilo Orsita Domo's 15th goal of the season, his 29th for his career at Eastern Florida. It is 2-0 to the Titans. And that came about by sustained pressure and, and sustained possession by, uh, by the Titans. You know, they look like they're really getting in their stride now. You know, they mixed it up with the, the long ball, picked up the second ball, which is also always, always critical and a, a composed finish. You know, it's a finish of someone who is very confident in a great goal scoring vein. It's just taking a touch and tucked it away in the far corner. 29 and a half minutes to go, it's 2-0. Two goals in the first 16 minutes. Yeah, it doesn't bode well for, for Broward. Hopefully they can they can dig in and, and you know fight their way back into the game. Stavi Diaz has been able to get down. So with Alex Alexis Corp on the right side, we thought a lot of the action would come down the left flank with Alberto Chavarria. That hasn't been the case. Ah, he's They've not had been success the, on the right. He's not been in the game at all. Really, he hasn't uh, hasn't had, had any possession. Reese Myers storming forward. Over low, cheeky little back pass to Tworkowski. 
Reed is waiting for things to open up. Myers will cross halfway with it. Strong on the ball, the Englishman from Nottingham. And they'll lose it in the touch this time. Broward down 0-2. Had some success switching the near side, as we said. Here's Corp. Freshman right at the halfway line. Has to lead it back on the negative ball. Orb star. See if they can activate Chavarria yeah. here as the rain picks up a bit. Starting to look a little bit more ominous. Yeah, I think they <laughs> need to get Chavarria into the game. He's basically not all the play they've had has been down this right hand side and They've had a couple of promising, been in a couple of promising positions, but haven't quite found the, the final pass or the quality to cause major problems in the Titans' defense. Tom, you said it's starting to look ominous. Is that, are uh, you referring to the weather or the are you weather. referring to Broward? Probably right now? both. <laughs> <laughs> Double meaning. Yes. It's getting quite dark to the it east. Is, it is. Hopefully, it just might just skip past us. Look from our crew. Switch to Denovi Diaz. Overruns it just a touch. Reed plays it forward. Orsi to Domo. Into Rosary. A guy can activate a lot of stuff. On the ball quickly. And this is a bit, I mean, brother are doing well. They're switching the point of attack from the left to right but then they just don't seem to have the enough impetus uh, or pace on this right hand side to cause major problems so I don't know if they think of switching Chavaria over to this side or trying to get a bit more ball out the left hand side oh, Rosary. <laughs> oh. quite nifty yeah not less. can't keep it that time cheeky little nutmeg nope. there Got that in his arsenal. He has. He's, uh, <laughs> Freshman out of Toronto. He's Spent there, some yeah. time in Jacksonville. Right now the single season assist hold record holder for Eastern Florida now with 12. Out on the first goal. He's got that little swagger about him as well of a, an accomplished player. You have to have that when you're his size, right? He's At 5'6", 165. Yeah, and make sure you jump out of tackles. <laughs> <laughs> Goal kick and a substitution here for Munga. Trying to stem the tide. And entering the game, number two. Uh, Gary Garcia Lopez out of Immokalee. Down southwest Florida, making his fifth appearance of the season. And we'll go back to eastern Florida on the throw. Wind picking up a little bit here, too, and that could have an effect on this game, too, if you were to start playing in, uh, in direct fashion. Yeah. Make it difficult on the keepers. Mm, not a slight advantage to, to Broward the way the wind looks like it's blowing at the moment, so perhaps they can push in, put a little bit of pressure on the Titans and, and get some more uh, some more possession further up the field. Tom, conventional wisdom says wind at your back is, is the better thing to have, but have, have we seen it in this game where it, it because of things hanging up on you, it yeah, sometimes it, gets, uh, it fools keepers the other way sometimes? It does. It, it can have a, a, a double effect. You know, if a team is really good at coming in and pressing and pushing you in there, having the wind at your back um, is a big advantage, but if a team's a, a good footballing team and, and can play things and I've got a more subtlety about them playing against the wind can be an advantage. Yes, especially on a set piece. Yeah. Rosary, quick turn. Showing that skill up the yeah. line, a little push to the Alexis. Yeah. Getting back to defend was Overstar. And they've got the really good chemistry between them as well. Um, Rosary and the Alexis they look, can read each other's game games really well and that causes problems because you get two very good mobile players that can read each other and if you're given space and time you, you're going to cause the opposition problems. Yeah. Failed to say that Troy Gonzalez 
Yeah, he started in the midfield the entire season, picked up a little knock and unable, un unavailable for tonight. So Rosemary back into the starting lineup. Talking with Coach Oliver, 12 trees. Last night at the OCB game in which we, he was serving as a commentator, said, uh, told me afterwards that really was really impressed with Oliver Lowe, what he had been doing the second half of the season. So he's been starting at that number 10 spot. Yeah. Oh, he's been, he's been terrific here tonight. He's got the ball, he's picked it up deep. A couple of times he, he's moved it and then he's made forward runs as well. And that's such a um, an asset. So he plays it forward and then he makes forward runs and, and gets into the box. He's almost a bit like a Harry Kane lookalike, to be honest. <laughs> so um be well, nice if he plays like him. Alvalo, goals, goals being, like him. being Swedish, his favourite book is I Am's Latan. Ah, OK. All right. But he, he's really been <laughs> dictating the game in there tonight. Yeah. He's, he's He's been getting on the ball. He's been keeping it moving. He's been dictating the tempo <sighs> and making forward runs. So he's, he's really the, the player oh. that things have actually revolved around. Offside, and we did see... Shiko Dixon tossing into the net for good measure and for a delay we'll get the yellow. Oh. So that's a So we might actually have we might mistake. find out what that rule is now tonight if it keeps going this way. That's right. Uh, but I think um Hakeem Reed's actually done very well since he's come on at left back too. He's looked really comfortable and composed on the ball. Um kept possession well and, and joined in well with uh yeah joined in well with the um, t -t -t Alexis. So you entered the game at the right back spot here because now Eastern Florida with a 2-0 lead. A couple of yellows though. Change things in a hurry. Yeah. Ah, Rosary yeah. didn't get the better end of that no. exchange. Yeah, it's a stinger. And that's what happens when you're a, a good player. I'm surprised one of the defenders hasn't done that a little bit earlier. They, well, just they haven't been able to get close enough. Do, do that to, <laughs> to Pulisic. Yeah, well, just to try and in, intimidate him a little bit. And, you know, when the ball goes up to his feet, to him, have him look over his shoulder a little bit. He's the type of player that if you give him time and space, allow him to play, he will cause you some problems. Low. And the more confident he gets, the more he'll try and not make people. <laughs> it's the generation though it's always about how it looks yeah and rain now I think the the dark skies that have come this yeah. way as everybody's scrambling Come on. in the crowd you see the raindrops falling big time now so oh, yeah Broward weathering the storm the best they can they're down 0-2 this could change the game and make it even more difficult. Definitely could. You know, and hopefully in the times when you just need to knuckle down and, and work your way through the, the conditions. Well, death, taxes, and rain in an Eastern Florida soccer match, those are the certainties in life. They certainly are. One thing about the rain in Florida, at least it's warm rain. I think the key thing for Brad now is to is to really knock in. Don't give a third goal away. If you, you give a third goal away, then you know th it's all over basically. Um, I see the domo all in left of the area goes all the way through the 18. Service into the area. It is really coming down in sheets. Most players will tell you they love playing in the rain. Unless it's yeah. hitting you in the face, right? Yeah. Uh, Just look at it. It's, it's horizontal. <laughs> this is oh, big oh. challenge from low here. I think that could be another yellow card, to be honest. If not he's more, he's going to settle them down. Yeah. I think he got away with one there. Maybe the conditions. I'll uh, just give them a little bit of leeway in, that, in those circumstances. Go. Yeah. Finally, Chavaria uh, was on the ball and yeah. played it forward to F Florian Lore. Yeah. It's a test of test of the eyesight as well now with this rain coming oh, down. Oh goodness! Well, the 
boot dryers will be on tonight. Oh my. <laughs> Sure, you played many a game in Scotland growing up like this, oh, huh? Yes, you, you did. And as you say, it wasn't warm rain. Yeah. And usually it kind of came down more sideways and it's uh, <laughs> went and vertically. I'm, I'm sure you're playing in mud too, in a bog. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, great job. Leave it right back as Laura was waiting for it. It was snuffed out at the last second. Brower using this rain as an opportunity. Sure. Left to the right side, Corp. Another cross away, open shot, big slide there by Mickey George to save it. Second ball is denied there by Reese Myers. Getting caught, people cl uh, caught flat-footed a bit. Oh, now it's getting fun. Yeah, the dynamic of the game changes a little bit <laughs> now. Slip and slide. Yeah. You can slide yeah. forever. Probably the best chance for the Titans in a really good position uh, for the brother. Really good position in behind the defence, and and again switching the point of attack, getting in behind the defence again. Great position. Probably, mm. I don't know if a cutback was the best option there in these conditions. I think sticking that go, ball right between the defenders and the goalkeeper is the way to go. Take could skip along there. Yeah, anybody could put it in Sorry. the back of the net. Shoot, shoot, and shoot some more. And a nice low uh, ball. He was listening to you, just kind yeah, of skimming skip. along the yeah, they're always the ground. The, they're the ones that, that concern you. But they're not oh. hit that well, and you just never know if they ricochet off somebody and, and where they could end up. It's the turn from Stefan Asimoto, who had checked in recently, the sophomore out of Weston, who plays for that powerhouse high school program known as Cypress Bay. And they've earned a, a corner kick here, I believe. Tell through the rain drops that or a throw. I think it'll it be a throw, throw in. Yeah, it's a throw in. So Andre Dinovi Diaz put it back in play. And uh, this time they'll have it. Yeah. So Broward have had a little bit of a renaissance and that since the rain has come in. Marked outside is Corp. And flying it over the top was Lorette. Still looking for his first goal of the season. Frenchman. And it just <laughs> looks <laughs> miserable sometimes when you're a keeper. You have to sit there and just take it. Yeah. Can't see. The gloves, I'm sure, get, get wet. difficult. Oh, yes. yeah. yeah. You lose the stickiness. Oh, skid off the surface. He's Rice. doing a good job here, just taking his time, settling things down. Nice. Being from Merritt Island, familiar with the weather in these parts. And immediately the other way, the one man break was Alexis. Good job by Denovi Diaz to track it down. Here's Corb. Back at the foot of Eastern Florida, Siegel Knight. Reese Myers. Siegel. A Jamaican with two on him. Let's take it away. Clean challenge. Step two by Torkowski to keep it in possession. Turn by Corp. And it is a slog through the midfield right now. More, not more than two or three passes per side before it's turned over. Yeah. Just getting adjusted to the, the different conditions. It's taking its, taking its time. Isaac Ku Kuoto out there getting a little run here late in the first half. The freshman out of Orlando, part of the Orlando City Academy setup. U18 Development Academy player. Appeared for OCB last year against Charlotte in USL play. So I think the wind's see him out there. I think the wind's turned around. It was, I'm sure it was blowing from our left to right in favour of Broward, and it seem, seems to have gone the other gone way. The yeah. other way. I think, I might be wrong, but I'm sure Ellen it was going <laughs> in that direction. What are you saying is, uh, is the manager or the coach in this point is dealing with the elements? Yeah, you, you just have to... First thing is, is you have to make sure that they don't impact you, that you, you keep 
you keep playing the game but you also then adjust to the conditions where you, you make sure that you don't take for granted that somebody's going to control the ball that you have to be extra careful with your passes because the ball's going to skid away you have to be particularly um, careful with shots going in and goal defensively you've got to make sure you you follow things in and attacking wise you've got to follow things in because they're liable to come off goalkeepers coming free is Asamoda so they've got into some good positions but they just haven't been able to open that open up the uh, the Titans defense so far but they've got into some good positions wide on both sides and got in behind the back four so they just need to get that either incisive pass or that run in the box or make the right decision in the final third. So we got a little under 13 minutes here in the half to pull one back and some sort of control of what's going on. A Dorisu, boy, how about that ball from the middle of the field? And it's going to go out for a throw in for. Eastern Florida, they lead 2-0. Now Michael White moving up and down that right side. Came in after the yellow cap. After the yellow to Dixon. And here comes a big throw from Torkowski, who can really ratchet it in there. The back oh. post, Kowoto. Over the top, the ball was wet. That's what you'd wet. say there. Yeah, it's difficult. Yeah, get it off. But a half chance. It's a, it's a decent throw, by the way. Yeah, he, he's Bouncing. always had that. <laughs> yeah. Warren Torkowski, in his days at Melbourne, playing for the uh, Bulldogs under Jerry McCabe, won the state championship and had that in his arsenal, and he's continued that here in his college career. Rory weapon. Delap, yeah. Yes, it is. And Rory Delap made a very, very good career out of that. that. Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps as he looks to continue his college career, that's something you look at. Back flick from Alexis Kowoto. Oh, that was a chance. Just held up a little too long. Jimmy Mwanga also in here late in this half for... Oliver 12 threes. That's when you see a lot of these substitutions come in, it sometimes changes the complexion of things. It does. It sometimes can really upset the rhythm of uh, of the team. It, it, makes, it mm. does help at times, but there are other times when, you know, it, it just does upset the rhythm. Here we so go again. Right. Alexis. Upset with himself as we're all back to the keeper Ortega. Yeah, that was a chance. I think uh, could have done a little bit better there. Next goal certainly important, Tom. Very no much doubt. So. The yeah. difference between two one and three zero yeah. is staggering. Yeah. If you know Brother get one back and go in two one at half time, they'll feel they they're they've it. got a chance and they're in the game. If um, if the Titans score the next goal, then the game's as good as over. I could, you know particularly for the, the goal scoring record of Broward, I don't see them coming back and scoring three or four goals. Yes, I mean just eight all season and four in the last five games. Against the top team, I think. Uh, Be cleared out. Yes. And George helping win the throw as you look at Robbie Orbstar. You don't see many players come over from Slovenia, no. one of the uh, smaller countries in Europe. Is, uh, but doing fairly well at international level. Yes, made the World Cup, what, 2010? Yeah. They were in the England, USA, uh, Algeria group, I believe. Can't remember that far back. 2010? South Africa, yeah. That group, yeah. We know that the United States will not be in yeah. 2018, <laughs> which is still a shock. It's a shock. And, and, and again, it was one of those nights where every other result had to go. Yeah, the it was they it said did. it was a 3% chance of, of that happening. Yeah. Um, and it happened. And it happened. 
Um, kind of take care of your own business. Yep. So it hurts now, but then, boy, it's really the reality is going to set in when we're coming around World Cup time and all the yeah. excitement around the world. Exactly. And you're not what you lose here, the momentum in the country of this game, and now a late challenge coming in. Down is Alexis. Stopping the clock is Sam Gillespie, the referee. And I think, I think that's another yellow card coming out. Yep. Oh, it's a red card. Is that a red card? Let's just take a look. Can't see. I think he may have produced a red card there. It was difficult to see, but it, from the reaction of the player, um, it looked like it was a red card, and he's walking straight off. So if that's the case, it will be Broward reduced to 10 yeah, on the challenge from Florian Lore. And it looks like somebody's coming in, though, so maybe it was just correct? a yellow. Oh, okay. He's going back to the bench. Not sure if our cameras caught the actual card coming out. And the good news is it was yeah, a red yeah. card we're hearing. Oh, so yeah. Alex Alexis is going to be checked out by the trainers. Let's take a look here. It looked a nasty challenge. but uh, well, There's the aftermath for sure. Yeah. And, yep, yep straight red. That, that is red in anybody's book, and you see... Loretta, the freshman, is off for the night. That makes it a Make that long much tougher. road back for, uh, for Broward. And now we'll have to see out a free kick here at a really dangerous spot, especially with number 10 on the ball. Well, the red cards were being handed out pretty regularly, so not surprised. So they're holding a very high line here. That's a Rosary great ball. Benson. Defended well. Last ditch defending by Orbstar. And we'll put out for a corner. So, wow, two goals and a red card, and a couple of yellows, and a torrential downpour. <laughs> a little Eventful. bit of everything. Boy, a swing and a miss. Just didn't get full purchase on that one. Mwanga, who scored in uh, three straight games off the bench for Eastern Florida. Here is Asamoda. Just a little bit isolated up there. Night right into the path of Rosary. We'll keep the pace up. Booted across. Oh. Initial oh. save made by Ortega. Loose ball. Siegel Knight right. scores it. It is 3 0. A fine strike from Siegel Knight. The Jamaican second goal of the season. Clinical finish. Um, I thought he may have hit the cross in too early. I thought, uh, <laughs> I thought Rosary may have gone at the defender here, but he, he did the right thing. Um, Whipped it in early. Keeper probably should have done a little bit better, to be honest. Um, got it either. Probably difficult to catch that, but I think he has to get it away a little bit further, or even just help it further, further on rather than push it out in amongst the traffic. But nevertheless, a good finish. Not in it, made the finish look a bit easier than it actually was. I think the, the dilemma for Broward now is 10 men, 3 and L. do you just try and limit the damage or try and find your way back into the game? But it's going to be a long way to get back into the game now. Well, you know that Oliver 12-3 is very happy with the way this one has played out thus far. I mean, he's got to play smart, really, the rest of the way. Yeah, that's where you want to... Keep your flow going, keep your rhythm going, make sure you don't get sloppy, because what can happen now against 10 players, you're probably going to dictate possession. Yeah, um, you're 3-0 up, probably not going to have a lot of threats. So what you don't want to do is, is drop your tempo, start getting into poor habits, start playing slowly. Yep. So, so hopefully they can just say, keep that rhythm going. 
Story so far tonight, three goals from three sophomores playing their final home game here. Alexis Orsidodomo and Siegel Knight. So you want to go out. Yep. Eight players playing their final game. At least here at home in the regular season. They're certainly a chance for more. And it looks like Broward will just see how this half of the press has stopped. Yeah. I think 4-4-1 uh, four, four, is the order of the day. Try and keep it tight. And a red card for Lauré. That happens. Ten minutes to play in the half, and then three minutes later, Knight connected to make it 3-0. Reed lays it in behind. Mwanga. Falls to the foot. Mwanga trying to make it look pretty. And the freshman of South African descent, and but from Dublin, Ireland, with a great chance there. a question of offside, but I think the uh, yeah. left back played him on, just played him on. Something to watch the rest of the game, trying to get that goal scoring streak to continue. He has three, does Moanga. Nike Academy product. Adrisu got the first touch, he'll go out for a throw. I see a pretty deep bench tonight for the Titans. Well, it, to be honest, all the players that have come on have done exceptionally well. Yeah, <laughs> trying to get more time going <laughs> forward. <laughs> Eastern Florida ranked 11th in the nation, 8-2 overall, 3-1 and one in conference play. They've avenged that one loss, and how? They lost 2-1 to one earlier this season to Daytona on this field, and then earlier this week whipped them 5-1. The thing I've liked about um, the Titans is they seem to have a great balance in the team. They've got, uh, you know, a really solid, disciplined centre backs and, and defence, so that they don't look like they're getting caught in the break. Um, they've got, you know, good balance in midfield, and then they've got mobility up front and and a little bit of power up front as well. So um, they they look like they've they've got a good side and a good vein of form as well. White, Auburn product will have a throw as Stefan Asamoda has had some moments since coming on as a substitute. Shavaria barely touched the ball. Keep Reed continues here on the left side. Myers. What a long a ball. Pass. Rosary gets a shot away. And he takes a shot from Ortega, the keeper. Coming up on two minutes to play in the half. It'll be a corner. A great long diagonal ball. And a fantastic first touch as well. I, thought, I think it's a goal kick. No, nope. honest, I thought it was a goal kick, but he's given the corner. All the way by Ortega. Not convincingly, but he got it away this time. <laughs> Hoots and hollers from Michael White with the touch there. <laughs> That's one of those nights where the bench has a little fun. <laughs> Team Reed. Earns the throw. So the body language now from yeah. the Seahawks dipping a little bit. They're looking, are they? looking a little soggy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One of those seasons for Munga Ekatebi. Yeah, they are 
are looking just a little bit dejected at the moment and stre this sort of stretched out now in the back yeah. four. Half time can't come yeah. soon enough. Yeah, they want to just hold on now and make sure they don't give any more away. Get in, get dried off. Maddie, have a cup of tea and then see how you get reorganised for the second half. Samora out to Colazos. Patient build up here, trying to keep the ball. Last 45 seconds of this first half. 3 0 Eastern Florida. Remember, they won the earlier meeting this season 4 1 on the road in Pembroke Pines. All time Seahawks 0 12 and 1 against Eastern Florida. It's not gone well. Uh, there have been a lot of competitive games in that series, a lot of 1 0s. Last year, 0-3, lost 1-0, 1-0, and 4-1. Final seconds ticking away here at the Titan Soccer Complex in this first half. And what a half it was for Eastern Florida State College. Goals from Alexis, Orsi Domo and Sigil Knight have given the Titans a 3-0 lead. We'll come back, talk about that first half, look ahead to the second right after this on WEFS. College women's soccer team takes on the Daytona State Falcons live Monday at 6 on WEFS. Currently I'm enrolled at Eastern Florida State College in the AMT program that's Aircraft Maintenance Technology um, and is a program that just started. I'm a member of the first class here at Eastern Florida. Everything we do here is FAA approved. When you're finished with this program, you will be able to receive your AMP as long as you pass all of the FAA written tests. All of the instructors here are ANPs. They have that background. Some of them have military backgrounds. Some of them have teaching backgrounds already. My instructor, for example, Hampton, he was in the Army. When he got out of the Army, he took AMP school and got his AMP, and he's been working in the industry ever since. Most of the other AMP schools are just book work. And we actually have the, the cool equipment, we've got the planes, we've got the engines um, to work on and, and get that experience that you can't really get anywhere else. My biggest interest after graduating here is going to be aerospace. Those aerospace um, facilities like SpaceX, Northrop Grumman, uh, GE, those are probably my top three. a successful career with a bachelor's degree from Eastern Florida State College. You can choose from nearly 20 tracks in today's top job fields of business, healthcare, and computer technologies with classes tailored to meet your needs on campus and online. Students interested in making their mark in the business world have options that include general business, sales and marketing, accounting and banking, and finance. I am pursuing my bachelor's in business organizational management and I'm getting a specialization in human resources. Not having to go out and find an apartment and get new living situations, find a new job, just be able to stay local and pursue the degree I wanted was just phenomenal for me. There are more choices in computer technologies with in-demand degrees for cybersecurity, program development, and project management. You can also become a leader in healthcare with degrees in advanced allied health biomedical sciences, and medical imaging. My overall experience at Eastern Florida was absolutely wonderful. From the initial academic advisors to the financial aid department to the instructors, all of the staff at Eastern Florida State College really help you accomplish your goals, not just academically, but also professionally. All of Eastern Florida's programs are created for fields where job growth is strong, providing you excellent employment opportunities after graduation. 
you'll benefit from personalized instruction and small class sizes and work with advisors on a customized plan of study. That includes online classes with many bachelor's degree courses just a click away and some bachelor degrees available entirely online. Whether you're just starting college or a working adult returning to pursue a new career, getting a bachelor's degree has never been easier. Eastern Florida's programs are affordable and offer flexible scheduling that allows you to stay close to home, making now the perfect time to enroll. A bright future awaits you with a bachelor's degree from Eastern Florida State College. To learn more, visit easternflorida.edu slash go slash bachelors. Eastern Florida State College women's soccer team takes on the Daytona State Falcons live Monday at 6 on WEFS. Halftime here at Eastern Florida State College. The, the Titans uh, up 3-0 uh, on the Seahawks of Broward College. So glad to have you along. Jeff Radcliffe, Tom Sermani, and our entire crew. Uh, what do you make of the first half? Obviously, the sending off changes the complexion of things, but Eastern Florida had control of this, at least on the goals Pretty front much. from the, from the get-go. Pretty much so. I think uh, maybe the first 10 minutes, um, Broward came out with a bit of intent and, and, and played well. But once... Uh, the Titans got uh, settled in. Uh, they, they dominated the game and and uh, looked a far better side and more accomplished side, more dynamic, created more chances and uh, you know deserved the three 0 lead. As we uh, look at the uh, first half highlights, uh, it was Broward with some chances early and then against the run of play, lightning struck. And I think that's the difference. You know, you see that that mobility there, the the mobility between Rosary and, and Alexis, and it just really carved up the carved up the defence really out of nothing and uh, and as soon as that goal went in I think uh, it was going to be a, a bit of a struggle for Broward and again the second goal came at the at the end of a really good passage of play where they held the ball for a considerable amount of time and then get into the final third and then the touch and the finish is uh, one of that one of those where our players in really good goal scoring form the third one you know I think the goalkeeper could perhaps have done a little bit better uh, but again, good following up and, um, you know, a good finish through through the bodies uh, and a great early cross as well. So I think overall, uh, you know, you, you're seeing a difference between a team in a, you know, really good form and really confident in the team that's going through a, a little bit of a tough time at the moment. A couple of uh, records, uh, school records falling in that first half as Heim Rosary had two assists on those three goals. <laughs> that gives him the single season record here that is now set at 13 and... Of course, Danilo Orsididomo had the, uh, a goal, and that puts him at 15 for the season. That is the most in a single season ever for a Titans men's soccer player. So congratulations to both here in their final home game. Speaking of uh, games here on campus at Eastern Florida State College, we got some big ones coming, some Division I women's college basketball. The Paradise Jam moving to Melbourne, Florida from the Virgin Islands due to the damage from uh, Hurricane Irma. Certainly unfortunate, but it's going to be held at the Titan Fieldhouse right across the way. On uh, Thursday, November 23rd is the first uh, set of games. It will be West Virginia versus Butler, Virginia Tech versus Drexler games at noon and 2.30. So Eastern Florida hosting uh, some fine programs here, some big name programs in uh, the college basketball ranks that will uh, continue uh, on Saturday as well. Uh, as it will be kind of a round robin. Butler, Butler will take on Drexel and then two rivals, really, West Virginia, Virginia Tech, a couple hours apart. They will uh, have the nightcap there on that second day. So big things happening, just not just with the Titans, but 
the, the, the facilities here, being able to draw bigger competitions. You talk about women's soccer hosting the National Junior College Tournament. Uh, really good for, for, for the university to have that kind of exposure. It is, and it's a great venue. You know, it's a, the field is fantastic. It's a great setup, good viewing. You know, it's a good little stadium to come and watch games in and a great little stadium to play in. So it, it's ideal for these, for these tournaments. Yeah, that tournament, the uh, national tournament we spoke of, will be here for, I believe, the seventh or eighth straight season. Mm -hmm. So get your tickets for that. That comes your way in November, as does the Paradise Jam at the, over at the Titan Fieldhouse as well. Well, let's talk about what Broward has to do to get back into this game. Is it possible down a man and down three goals? Uh, I would say fairly impossible to, in reality. I think, again, I think what they've got to do uh, early in the second half is not give anything away. Just get in there, probably set up in a 4-4-1, keep it tight, and then hope that they can maybe, you know, sneak a goal in the break and then get themselves back in the game. If they do that and, and keep it tight, what they might do is they might frustrate um, East Florida and, and then get East Florida out of their rhythm. But other than that, I can't see them coming back. Seahawks, two games remaining after this one. The University of Bahamas and then closing out the conference schedule, Daytona State. They need a win. In order to make the conference tournament, they have some work to do. Titans lead at 3-0 at the half. State College women's soccer team takes on the Daytona State Falcons live Monday at 6 on WEFS. My wife is currently in the Air Force, so I decided to be a stay-at-home father. I'm a retiree and a full-time student. I did um, online classes because I was traveling and it was easy to take the classes with me. I am graduating today with my bachelor's in business administration. If it wasn't for the online classes, I would not be standing here today. There shouldn't be any procrastination. Just get out there and go do it. Great careers in aviation are taking flight at Eastern Florida State College with the Aviation Maintenance Technician Program at the Orlando Melbourne International Airport. The program is designed to provide highly skilled workers to companies such as Embraer, AAR, Northrop Grumman and others that are fueling the airport's expanding commercial aviation sector. Graduates will also have job opportunities at Kennedy Space Center as their skills are transferable to the commercial space industry. Companies such as SpaceX, Boeing and Blue Origin are developing new spacecraft to carry astronauts to the International Space Station and beyond on missions that could begin as early as 2018. The FAA-approved program is housed at Eastern Florida's new Aviation Center. The center includes classrooms for lecture classes and a fully equipped hangar where students get hands-on training with multiple aircraft, a machine shop, testing equipment, and composite station. Most of the other AMP schools are just book work. And we actually have the, the cool equipment, we've got the planes, we've got the engines um, to work on and, and get that experience that you can't really get anywhere else. I've dedicated my world not only to the Air Force but now to the civilian sector and I hope that the people that come here understand the importance and the need that we have for aircraft maintainers. The program consists of two certificates, the Aviation Airframe Mechanics PSAV and the Aviation Power Plant Mechanics PSAV. Students learn aircraft maintenance theory, diagnostic procedures, and FAA-approved methods for inspecting, servicing, and repairing aircraft and their systems. They're also taught how to use aviation industry standard tooling and equipment to perform work on actual aircraft. 
graduates are qualified to take the Federal Aviation Administration exam that can lead to jobs in aircraft maintenance, repair, and refurbishment that average $55,200 annually. So don't miss your opportunity to be a part of the exciting and growing field of aviation maintenance. Visit our website for information on how to apply. Join local sportscaster Eric Kohler as he hosts Eastern Florida State College coaches and student athletes for a closer look inside Titan Sports. Produced in partnership with Florida Today, the weekly in-depth program covers the 11 Titans men's and women's sports teams through game footage and coaches analysis. Get closer to the action Thursday night at 8 here on WEFS. Eastern Florida State College women's soccer team takes on the Daytona State Falcons live Monday at 6 on WEFS. Back at the Titan Soccer Complex, ready for half number two. We switch sides. Broward with lots of work to do, trailing 3-0. Also a, a man down out on the field. So it is 10 on 11 after that red card that happened about 10 minutes to go in that first half. We're underway. And we'll see. There's Dixon who got yellow carded early back here to start this second half. Knight will stay out there. Also see Isaac Cuoto. So a lot of those guys that finished the half back out there. And when you're in command of a game, Tom, you have that luxury. Yeah, you don't want to change too much. I think I think the key thing for um, Eastern, Eastern Florida is that uh, they don't get sloppy and give up a goal. Uh, I think uh, Oliver will be more than irate if in this situation they end up coughing up a cheap goal. Until the 5-1 win against Daytona State, they had three straight clean sheets get one here tonight. That one will go <laughs> over Oliver 12 trees. <laughs> sure if you've seen that where it was going. I can maybe have headed that back in. <laughs> Good night for him, <laughs> all smiles. Had a good conversation. Of course, he's been commentating on some of the OCB games with me this year over in Orlando and had some insight being a college coach uh, with what's going on in the United States on the men's side anyway. Yeah. And had some perhaps some solutions, things that should be taken a look at. Yeah. Yeah, I think or obviously the academies come come in and come, yeah. It's a it's an interesting dynamic in the U.S. I, I think one of the unfortunate issues here is that the country is actually too big. <laughs> I know yeah. that sounds strange, but uh, in some of the smaller countries, it's easier to find your talent and develop your talent when it's spread out so much and. Um, you know, you don't have your best players always in with your best players. Yes. It, it can make things a little bit more difficult, and you get such an array of a, a, a mix, both an ethnic mix and a philosophical mix here that you you know you get a whole variety of coaching, etc. It's not an easy issue. It's not an easy problem to solve, to be honest. Julian Hall uh, in there here for Eastern Florida to start the second half as well. Scherer. The rain's Drops come back. Down. As soon as it, we had no rain during <laughs> halftime, as soon as the game restarts, the down. sky's open. Hi, oh. <laughs> yi, yi. Well, uh, we don't have to get the ark and pair up the animals yet, but we'll man. Of course. Just as well as good drainage on this field. That's right. Well, we've seen that back in the days where they hosted the state soccer finals for high school here. They played game after game after game and the field held up quite well. Falls inside of the box. Rosary on the back side will give it a rip and put it in behind. Or was it a goal? 
Can't see through the raindrops. No, no it's gone in behind. I think okay. defender did a good job closing that down because that was really dangerous. But, oh, okay. Uh, I took a deflection out back. He's, he's got across quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to cash in from the corner. A little bicycle. Yeah. You can't do that these days. And paying the price for that attempt. Two players on the pitch as we take another look. Sometimes when you get a lead, you, you attempt things maybe you shouldn't. Yeah. Aye. Oh, that's a painful one. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting. That, you know, we've noticed this in uh, a couple of the the English Premier League games now where players have got red cards even, uh, or yellow cards, but also red cards. And it's just, it's such a dangerous manoeuvre. And, and it's been an interesting dynamic because in games, if you do it in the middle of the field or somewhere else, you get a free kick automatically. But players would be doing it in the penalty area and, uh, and goals would be scored and nothing would happen. I didn't see if the referee, Sam Gillespie, gave... I don't a yellow to sure because if he did he's off because that would be his second yellow card let's see if we caught that of course the rain makes that a little bit more difficult to see because he did have a yellow card in the first half he did. And if that's dangerous play I mean we'll, we'll be 10, dangerous on, 10 play. on 10 and that gives Broward some hope and he's going he's to the back yeah, pocket he, yeah, that's he's a red gone card. Off. he's gone off yeah so that's so, uh, so the attempt on the ball and now yeah. we're level on players, so hey, for Broward, now you got a fighting chance, maybe, to, yeah. to at least play open, right? Yeah. Yeah, and as I say, it's one of those things that probably only of late the cards have started coming out for those those kind of attempts at, at goal in the penalty area. But it is dangerous play, um, and, and it's a fair yellow card, to be honest. 49th minute. That so might sure give a off. bit more hope. 10 on 10 in a game that was already open. <laughs> yeah. Open up just that much more. Broward into the attacking half. This is Asamoda. A little life now. Siegel Knight. Rosary had given him some. The respect he deserves that time, the heavy touch. And will continue the run. Oh. How is he keeping it on his foot? That's a great oh. little ball through. Along the back side, good save good there by through. Ortega. Julian Hall had a good run at it. Rain steady now. Looking out our window is useless now. We need windshield yeah, wipers. Think, uh, yeah, I think we're on the monitor. Even that's <laughs> difficult. <laughs> it's step two. Back to the captain. Denovi Diaz. Good job by Oliver Lowe to win it. Is that Orsi Domo? But Dixon leaves it right. Oh, Rosary had it slip off the front of the boot. Throw deep in their own half for the Seahawks. Oh, the Broward throw. Well, we were talking off off air during halftime about what you have coming up now that it's the off season, but talk a little bit just about the season it was as the Orlando Pride in their second year making the playoffs, going out west, playing a really tough Portland team, but all in all, you've got to be very, very pleased with how they, the club performed this year. Certainly, certainly pleased with how, how we finished. Our last, uh, it, you know, going undefeated for nine games at the, at the back end of the season was uh, was very pleasing. And uh, But to credit to the players, you know, the first part of the season was quite tough. You're still, you know, juggling your, your roster, finding out about players, how things work. and um, But the players stuck stuck with it, how we wanted to play. And even through those frustrating times, they they kind of 
were very upbeat and always felt that once we got going that we could put a run together. So players deserve a lot of, a lot of credit for the way they hung in there. Obviously a bit disappointing more on the result over there. We felt that our, you know, the four one scoreline didn't quite reflect Flatter, the game. Yeah. That it was a bit flattering and that that's that was a the players were really deflated after that game and I think it the score line was uh, the the cause of that. So but but overall, you know, I think we've got a real foundation uh, of, of a solid team and you know, hopefully just add to the foundation that w we've got now next year and and st start a little bit better <laughs> got marta of course uh, camilla uh, did their acl unfortunately yeah. but uh, of course alex morgan what, what a core you have uh, yeah. ali krieger what she she was able to uh, give this year i mean uh, you don't need to change much do you no not at all and you know we've got a really good blend in there with you know those a, a experienced players, and then you know you look at Alana Kennedy, uh, yes. who I think is just about the best Tremendous. midfield player in the league, and she's 22. Camilla's just turned 23. When she, when she comes back, um, Rachel Hill, you know, 21. So I think we've got a, a a real good good balance. And as I say, if we can just add maybe two, three, f maximum four players to that. Uh, the right players, then uh, I think we've got a strong side, a uh, strong squad going into next year. Orlando will have a chance to shine here tomorrow. NWSL Championship being hosted by the Pride. They don't get to play in it, unfortunately, <laughs> after that semifinal, but uh, you're going to have uh, North Carolina uh, versus uh, Portland and uh, the top two seeds, right? So yeah. uh, it, it kind of went chalk. Yeah, and, and I think the other thing that you see with those teams and Chicago who were in there is stability. You know, if you look at their rosters and you look at their teams, they've, they've been stable over two or three seasons and they, they have that that cohesion. Um, and, th and that's our aim. You know, starting next year, our, our aim is, um, is stability. Mm -hmm. That's right. Just make some sort of a, a, a game improvement each each year. Yeah, yeah. That's what you like to see, the steps. Well, the ticket's still available if you're interested in seeing some yeah. fine women's soccer tomorrow, the, the pinnacle of the sport, yeah. next to next to the, the you know World Cup level stuff. Yeah, it'll be a great game. The two really good sides, competitive sides. Um, Dixon pushed off the ball. Tough sides. It'll, it will be a, a terrific game to watch in a magnificent stadium. That's right. Stadium, we've seen a lot of action, and we'll see Sunday uh, the final home game for Orlando City as they yeah. take on Columbus. We had the U.S. men's national team on a 4-0 yeah. defeat of Panama, which by anybody that came in from out of town to see that game, whether they were in the members of the media, in the press box, or in the crowd, this is a home for the U.S. men's national team going forward. Without doubt, it's, it's interesting because we were on the road and, and saw the game on television, and you often don't get... Uh, appreciate the atmosphere, but you actually could, even even watching the game on TV, you could just sense what yeah. unbelievable atmosphere it was in the stadium. You thought that was, okay, we're, we're qualified. That's, that's, that's going to springboard yeah. it. Took them out and then uh, turned it out into Tobago. Same it. starting 11, would you? Yeah. If you were Bruce Arena, do you, do you do that? Because yeah, they, they were flat. They were, f they were flat. A bit, you know, I mean, you've had a, you've, you've had headed it, uh, up a national team. You yeah, know how I, have, this works. I mean, I've always been one with a national team to to mix the squad up. But I'm not saying that's you know I'm not saying that's the gospel. But uh, yeah, I think when you Friday you, Tuesday, yeah, you you try and um, you know maybe just freshen it up a, a little bit. And they had some play, you know you have some players that are very experienced. You know, it's not like you've got a start and a living and then a, a drop off. You have a, a very strong squad there. So, Lovely. but it's easier to say that from the outside. Yeah. I, 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 I don't want to say that in, as a matter of criticism because, um, you know, if they go there and they change the squad and get the same result, you get criticised yeah. for changing a team that just won four nil. Yes, I, exactly. <laughs> That's how it works, right? You can't yeah. please everybody. They're so. saying a, a United States C team should have won that game. Yeah. There was no no Kevin Molino, no yeah. uh, Jones for yeah. for, for uh, Trinidad. Nope. Some of those MLS nope. stars they have, they were not available. So it was a B team for Trinidad. Hadn't won a, a, a qualifier in nine, uh, where they were un winless in nine. Right. Yeah. It's just nobody thought it would happen. Yeah. And you take it for granted sometimes that you're yeah. always going to be in the World Cup. There's no easy games in soccer these days, mm. none whatsoever. Uh, at that level, 
it just doesn't happen. Um, and if you look at you know some of the results in, in, in World Cup qualifiers and how difficult some teams make it, even for the top teams, um, it just shows yeah. you there's no easy games. Difficult yeah. environment as well. Uh, difficult field. So I sound like I'm not making excuses, but I just know how difficult these games are. And um, but it was a you know I think everybody thought and, and yeah. should have thought that the US should have won the game. No, not necessarily comfortably, but should have done enough to win the game. And now we've got a stoppage here. At Oliver, 12 trees hot at something. Point he made on the broadcast last. Look who else is out. Uh, Chile is out. Netherlands yeah. is out. So it happens. Scotland's out. Scotland's out. <laughs> Again. That never happens. Again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it opens, but it a, opens yeah. a dialogue, some, which is the positive. Um, and... Uh, the other big thing about this Sunday's game is Kaká's last That's right. home game, which is huge. I mean, he's uh, done tremendous things for this this club and, and for such this a community. wonderful guy. Um, he'll be missed. Yeah, true, true professional great human pro. being. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, both. You know, yeah. great pro and a, and a great person. All right, great score line right now for Eastern Florida. A lot of the reserves in there. The Julian Hall, freshman out of Clearwater the self-proclaimed FIFA king of the Titans okay. soccer team. Getting an extended run out. Coming up on half hour to go. So once games get stretched out like this, it's, you know, it's yeah. a free for all sometimes. Tactics go out the window a little yeah, bit. They do, it's like sometimes like two five sides each end of the field. And it is 10 on 10. Each team has had a player sent off on either side of halftime. A lovely ball. Torkowski got there first, used all of that 6 4 frame. Yep. Safely in the hands of Notre Donato. Yeah, it, was a, it was a good idea. Um, you know, uh, striker playing on the shoulder, a little bit of space between the, the, the two centre backs, and um, they, they did well to sort of cover it up, but it was a good idea. And given chase. Play it back. Lucas Fonseca Lopez on the left side here for the Seahawks as they move it to the right. On each side really emptying a lot of the bench here. Held up by Asamoda. Nicely done by Reese Myers. <laughs> you need a throw by the camera person. That's what we just heard. Carlos. Galvez from Miami. Four by Orbstar. And it has to start with one. And it's going to be Eastern Florida ball. All three goals scored in the first half. A lot of the regulars out of the lineup here in the second half as Eastern Florida looking to go on the road well, Wednesday to take on ASA, finish it out. Well, I, I think I think now with Broward, if uh, now that it's down to t uh, again, if it was at ten against eleven before, I think you would probably just try and shut up shop and, and limit the damage. But I think now that you know it's ten against ten, and, and at the moment uh, Eastern Florida are going through a little bit of a flat spell I think there's an opportunity for Broward to to perhaps push an, push an extra player on um, into the attack and actually sort of maybe press a little bit higher and, and actually go to try and get a goal back in this game and see if they can change the momentum Myers coming back his rosary 
Settling in and work, use the, use the whole field here. Torkowski. At night is an option, instead goes left. Risu lofting into the path. Right along the byline. Dealt with by Adrian Jaramillo. And curled back in. Julian Hall was waiting inside the 18 to pounce. Looking for his first goal of the season still. Siegel. Stepping in is Dixon. Rosary. Oh, dummy. Dixon was trying to run off of the non-pass from Rosary and down in a heap as Roby Orb Star. Call it a cramp a bit. Yeah, I think it just just caught him. There was nothing much in that, to be honest. Kabina Coker and the Englishman 6'4 center back has joined the fray here. Yeah, he's a big lad. He's an imposing figure. That managing the game portion, right? The yes, support. very much so. And, that, and this is where, again, you know, it's the game got a, got a little bit ragged, to be honest. And this is where you've got to be careful. You get a little bit ragged, then all of a sudden, um, you know, Brown's got the field, scored a goal. It changes the whole momentum of the game. So I think, uh, you know, if you're the Titans, you want to make sure you don't give anything away, but you want to start getting your momentum back again. And I think, you know, again, perhaps a lot of that is down to the, the number of changes that have been made and trying to get that fluency back often isn't that easy. Some changes here for both sides. Looks like three will come on for Oliver, 12 trees, two for Munga Ekatebi. Rain now steady but light. Lighter. Lighter. <laughs> Just it's all relative. <laughs> so he's off to Torrential. <laughs> <laughs> Throw here for Andre De Novi Diaz. 5'7", 155-pound sophomore out of Caracas, Venezuela. He and Alexis Corp has had some run along that right side here tonight. Haven't been able to nick a goal, though. Crosses away, it's going to go in behind and into the parking lot. In these conditions, this could be an opportunity for Broward. You know, they found it difficult to, to really create any, you know, what you call good openings, really. They've had some, a couple of half chances, but not, not a real full chance so far. But I think in these conditions, anything in a danger area is, is dangerous. Ooh, there you go. As you were saying, <laughs> yeah. any ball that falls in, all it takes is a somebody yeah. to pounce. Andre Donato just doing enough. Clear away by Torkowski, and it will be a throw for Broward. Eastern Florida women played earlier this afternoon in a thorough dismantling of ASA College of Miami. It was 18-0 against an eight-man ASA team. So you really can't, if you were Jeff Carr, can't read much into no. that one at all. But you got the big one against number four Daytona State coming Monday. That game you can see here live on WEFS. So we close yeah. out our fall broadcast schedule. I said to Jeff, I wish I had a few games like that. <laughs> yeah. You don't see that. <laughs> you don't see that in NWSL, huh? Not, not quite. But they've uh, Brad have got a little bit of momentum. I think if they can they can push now and, they, and it's time now to, to now maybe take a little bit of a gamble. Ten v ten, little chance to get get back in the game or at least to salvage something. Always a danger on the break, but I think you just need to take that risk now. If you're you Oliver, know? that's the, the challenge for yeah. like the team you've got out there. Yeah. Is to see it out, keep yeah. it a clean sheet, if not score another goal or two. Yeah. Not getting trouble. Managed to. Playing a 
its way out, and flag stayed Stay down there. Yep. Yeah. So now yeah, you got the orb star, the center back, playing a, an attacking role here. Theo Georgen. Good job holding the ball. And now it goes the other way. Pace starting to slow just a tad. Just a as soon as I say that, they put it into high gear. <laughs> and I think this is the danger for, for Broward is that, Oof. you know, they're, they're having a good spell at the moment, but in, in that transition, the, uh, the Titans have just got some dynamic players and that can really hurt you. Korkowski and Myers have owned anything in their area. Yeah, they've been really solid tonight. Oh, Michael White continuing to play that right back spot. Knight. Snuffed out by the Seahawks. Georgian. And, uh, good uh, cover. Again, they've made it look easy tonight. Uh, Myers and Tor Torkowski. 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 Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, they've, <laughs> they've been they're un uncompromising, but they're also, oh, I say that, they're un. Another challenge here is the captain lets it fly uh, and puts it wide of the target. Probably the best chance of the night for, for Bird, but the two centre backs have been really solid. Well, if you're leaving it to have a, a shot long, a great ball in. Hung up just a touch for Horatio Turner, the Jamaican. Reasonable effort on goal. Headed to the center of the park, Turner. Herman Herding. I think he might have just tweaked his ankle as he felt as he as he came down there. Play it through. Torkowski read it. That's, and he's done that very, very well tonight. It's one of those you can do it. You know, 15 times in a game, but the 16th gets <laughs> by you, you're the GOAT. Yeah. <laughs> Letting him have some of the ball here. Yeah. It is 10 on 10. Carlos Galvez. Again, it's like beating your head against a wall, oh, yeah. going up against Torkowski yeah. and Myers. That one takes a oh, wicked yeah. hop. Well, there's been a couple of... Uh, Glimpses at goal now for uh, for Broad. It'll give them a little bit of confidence. Certainly been in the ascendancy here as of late. Clip. Oh yeah. Just pull down. Yeah, those deflections can go anywhere. They can end up, as we saw with the US team yeah. the other night. Oh man. Oliver Lowe going to come in to help shore things up. Yeah. And Herding was the one that had that shot. It's got a corner kick opportunity here, 20 minutes to go. Lucas Fonseca Lopez, the Brazilian. Freshman does have one goal on the ledger this year. Out swinging kick. Torkowski got the head to it. Georgian will chase. God, this is just a slow pass there to that. <laughs> You know, oh. oh, golden opportunity, and it just went wide for Lewis Dillon. He was caught between two minds, I think. Yeah. Do I hit it hard or, or just touch, touch it, in? it in? I think, uh, and maybe just ever so slightly behind him, um, past the near post, so he oh. just couldn't quite get around it. It's maybe one of those where you just dummy it, and then one of the players coming in behind can tuck it away, but that's probably... Probably the best opening that yeah. Bird have had, and they've been in the game for this last five or ten minutes. Fonseca Lopez with a nice little square run and left it low and behind. Oh, oh and a tech goal for Alex Alexis. He has got a brace, and just like that, four nil. And is there in lies, now. Yeah. lies the difference between a team when things are going well and things are not going well. 
So Broward have just had the, probably the best spell in the game and uh, they've been undone from a, a kick from oh. the goalkeeper. <laughs> and he's going to get the yellow That's for the harsh. celebration. That's a bit harsh. So we'll have to go off. Yeah. That's ah, you get two goals in a game. You're your fourth and fifth of a season here. Yes. Not the corner flag down. That yeah. Bounces yeah up again. But, but the, the corner flag is defenseless. Yeah. It's a I don't know. That's <laughs> can't defend three itself. Three bit harsh. <laughs> <laughs> Gillespie into the little black book. Yep. These black been books getting active. bigger. Uh, Low with his third assist of the season. Again, good composed finish, made it look easier than it could have been in this surface with the ball skidding across in front of you, just opened out, little side footer. So, a nice composed finish, but I, I, you, mu you must feel a little bit for Brewer because they were having the best spell in the game there. Had a, you know, a couple of half chances and um, were dominating the game possession wise, and then from a goalkeeper's like kick, the first Brewer goal was the same goal. type of yeah, thing. Yeah, very much so. Against the run of play. Switches it. Myers. Top. There by Low. Continuing the run. And back on the ball, shielding and winning once more, but it ran out of steam. Too many, too many blue jerseys in the vicinity to help that along. I thought he's got to be careful. Oh. Dylan's wondering how come that advantage wasn't given. <laughs> Two red cards in this one. Low wrong for the Seahawks and sure in the second half for the Titans. That's why we're 10 on 10. It hasn't been a nasty game. There's been just some mistimed challenges, and uh, but it's been competitive, but it's been played in a good spirit. Coker. So far. <laughs> Coker from Hackney in the UK. Okay. Sorry, near London, right? Yeah, in London, yeah. It's in London. Oh, 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 but, oh. In oh. Oh. Play on. And it's given. I think and there might be some uh, oh. retribution. <laughs> I, uh, think, here we uh, go. I think he's it's like gone. Mad Max be on Thunderdome here as of late. I think he is, oh, he is a lucky yeah. boy. And shown the card, he's off. He was lucky that that was uh, a yellow one, nothing. Well, I've got double the pleasure. Double, yeah, I was going to say there's two tackles here. Oh. That, that in itself was a red card. Followed up by. Let's do that. <laughs> that yeah. one. He is a very lucky boy to still be on the field. Or to be able to come back on the field. I think the uh, phrase rush of blood comes to mind. <laughs> and Sebastian <laughs> Pogetz <laughs> is back. Getting the money's worth on the challenges, there's <laughs> yes. no doubt. Oh, there's been some tasty ones, and I've just been saying <laughs> games we played in a good spirit. Uh, I just don't want to see anybody hurt. No. Uh. A, I mean, a rivalry where you're the bug and Eastern Florida's the windshield here the last four seasons. Yeah. So sometimes it get, things get the better of you as far as emotions. Yeah. You get sick of being the one splattered. Yeah. And especially when you get. Or see Dodomo sitting on a brace. He'll let it fly. Big yeah. save from Ortega. Yeah. Good save. Pulled down by Rosary. Couldn't get it back on this foot. Just getting stretched again. But again, center back is good covering. They, they've made yeah. the job look easy tonight. Tworkowski. Is athletic. Yeah. He can run. Um, but the positioning's been good. The discipline's been good. It's great to have two centre backs like that. My 
Myers. There you go. Okay. Center back with the ball at his feet. Okay, maybe not so good when when they do that. <laughs> Sometimes you get a little full of yourself. <laughs> yeah. Oliver Lowe tripped up, keeps his feet. He's a terrific game tonight. Great game. Back. Another shot on the way and just skims by the right post. And you see that yeah. he wanted one bad. Yeah. Just bounced it wide. Again, he's done this often tonight. He's, he's broken up things, set things up, continued to though. make forward runs, getting in behind defenses. He actually did the right thing there, composed himself, put it on his right foot, and, and fair, uh, fair play to the goalkeeper who came out quickly, held his ground, and made a, a very good save. Corner kick once more. I'm Rosary. Bend it in and head it out. Mess up the clearance a bit. And quickly Ortega off his line. The Titans well on their way. Over 14 to play. 4 0 advantage. A shot from distance cool. and behind. That had Notre Donato scrambling. Yeah. That's all they've been really left with is shots from the outside. Yeah, they have. Besides you know, the, the, the one we saw a few moments ago. Yeah, a couple of times where they've gotten across crossing position, but outside of that, most of their efforts have come from, from 20, 22, 24 yards, whatever. And uh, again, on this surface, if you, you get it right, that one was, was flying, but uh, just off target. Shut out. Still plenty of work to do in that regard. Comes back to the Seahawks on the throw in. This result holds. Seahawks will lose their sixth straight. Drop to two and six after starting the season two and zero. Oh. It's been a tough run, though. They've, every one of them has been uh, away Close. from... Yeah, one, oh, yeah, one at yeah. home, and then every last four, the fifth, this is the fifth in a row oh, away from home. Another big challenge. Oh, and another card. One of the yellow variety. Is that, is that Arroyo that got pegged on that one? Let's see. I think it might have been Rosary. Now Rosary got yeah. caught out. Yeah, they... Those are reckless challenges. And the, the, those are challenges that can hurt, hurt people. Um, Oliver is making that point right now. Yeah. Sometimes happens when you have a commanding lead. That's yeah. the frustration from the other side coming to get you. And you have these little ball players running at you, <laughs> irritating you all night. Little <laughs> so mosquitoes that you want to swat them. <laughs> exactly. And, uh, they haven't been no CMs tonight. They've struck for four goals. Alexis with two, Orsi Didomo, and Siegel Knight the others. Yeah. Oh, good move. There's another oh. shot attempt on the way. And just off target. Again, great little combination. Yeah. Boy, Adrisu still looking for his first goal of the season and missed right. it by that much. Yeah, it's did the right thing, hitting it across the goalkeeper, but just... Uh, Screwed it away instead of hitting it just straight, straight and flat into the far post. More reinforcements, getting some of those stars out. Yeah, yeah, I think taking the hits. Last thing you want now up, uh, from the Titans is to get one of your, particularly one of your key players injured. This is Franco Gugliamucci, <laughs> freshman forward. Uh, that's easy for you to say. Uh, bench has been empty. <laughs> yeah. uh, no problem for Notre Donato. He'll play it with the foot that time. Under 12 to go. Titans trying to peak at the right time here. So he head into the postseason. One more game. And on the heels of two really dominating wins. It's always a cause for concern of getting a little too overconfident on the road against a team that you played to a 1-0 game here on the 29th of September and had won it close to the death. 
against ASA, so it's not going to be an automatic win down there. I want to keep this confidence, Phil. Yeah, I want to keep the, the rhythm I think they've got going. The teamwork's been good, the combinations have been good. Players are looking comfortable with each other. Oh, oh goodness. That's another, that's another poor challenge. That, that's an unnecessary challenge. And getting a talking to. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes off for this. Uh, yeah, I can understand the frustration of the referee. That is a completely racking up the yellows. Yeah. Sam's uh, pencil will be running out of lead at this. Yeah, uh, Dylan this Marrera. Rate. Again, winning the game four 0 The like, this is a completely unnecessary, unnecessary challenge. It, it, it's balls rolling through to the goalkeeper. You get no chance to get it whatsoever. The chances are you'll injure yourself, yeah. injure the goalkeeper. And probably fortunate he didn't get a, a red card. That, that's for me. This that kind of that's poor indiscipline for yeah. me. If you're Dylan, you just got into the game. Yeah. Freshman out of Melbourne. And you're just now out of it again. So you Sometimes can understand it if it's a broad player and is really frustrated. But you know you're four 0 up. Sometimes those heavy challenges yield from the other side for payback. One of those things. Maybe. Yeah. Kowski. Low. Komodo. Run continues here. It's like open the gates and let the horses run. Smith the Shields yeah. getting a run now too, yeah. Names I haven't had to call very much this season <laughs> you, when you, you empty the bench like this. I don't envy your job when all these changes happen. It's hard enough for me to yeah, keep. It's, it's nice when it's just the three, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when they're done, they're done. For me to get the two starting a living right throughout yes. the game is a, a challenge, <laughs> but all these changes makes it is impossible. That's why I think college coaches should make more money. <laughs> Got to get those names straight, yeah, yeah. get everybody in. So the Bermudan, the Smith to Shields, the Kano Smith of Eastern Florida State <laughs> College. <laughs> <laughs> Your assistant coach, former MLSer yeah. with New England Revolution, the, the pride of the island of Bermuda, one yeah. of the best players the island's ever produced. Uh, the Prince of Bermuda. Does he have a statue by any chance? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm trying <laughs> to find that out. I'm, I, I think he gets the red carpet when he goes home there. I bet. I'm going to leave this back along the line. Yeah. Second shot on oh. the way, saved off the line. Denying Gugliamucci. Woo. Now Broward still defending Good the best on they one. could. Good on one. He, and he did well there, getting it on his right foot. Good scrambling defense to, to get it away and keep the... Uh, Keep the score sheet down. Guglielmucci will approach this with the left foot. His hometown is N slash A. I'm not sure where that's at. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry, now. <laughs> that's just according to the paraphernalia of the roster. We've got the propaganda supplied by Mike Parsons. Gonna be a fun write up on the box score and game status, game uh, story tonight. How many yellows can you get in yeah. one game? That's been a huge number. Seven, I think, by yeah. my count. I'll check that in the truck. Yeah. And two reds. That's a decent number. Myers. Smith the shields helping. What's, oh, the, what's the suspension rule? How many cars do you need before you get suspended? That I don't know. No. You know yeah, yeah the, the, the accumulation? Yeah. That I'm not quite sure. Yeah. Because yeah. that could play Come some effect on a very yeah. big game, yeah. 
Must give uh, Ortego credit in the second half. Uh, the goalkeeper, uh, you know, limited the damage. He, he has limited the damage. Made, you know, two, three, or four, you know, one-on-one -on -one saves. Come out, made himself big, and uh, you know, apart from one goal, been been very, very solid in, in goal. And had no opportunity, no chance with the goal they scored. The Titans have to see out seven more minutes for their ninth win. Great ball in, shot just off target and denied once more is Lewis Dillon. He's had a couple of those that have just missed the target. Physically too strong there. Um, well, good play by uh, by the attacker and good play by by the defender there. Yeah, hurting with the centering ball. Another set piece opportunity comes from a corner here as Nuno Donato is setting things up defensively. And it's right to the keeper's hands. So a little too tight. Yep. Six minutes to play. Low shaking off one tackle. Get off my plane. And he will run from end to end all for naught. <laughs> He's covered some ground tonight, though. Yeah. Martinez gives to Francisco Arroyo. Down the line again, Dylan. Corner kick again. I think they're they're deserve some, yeah, they deserve some credit. They, they, they certainly they haven't given up. They haven't thrown the towel in. They, they, they've kept on, on working. Probably feel a little bit aggrieved that uh, the second half score line is what it is. But uh, credit to them for, for keep going to the, you know, right to the end here. Pawed away by Notre Donato. Bouncing around like a, bouncing through like a pinball wizard. Those are the ones that sometimes find their way in, trickle in. Dylan here on the wing now. Up the line. Galvez. Brower has had plenty of the ball. Whoa, checks the surroundings. Eastern Florida ball, four and a half to go. Some tired legs out there now. <laughs> Right before the big game Wednesday down in Miami, Hylia. So close out the season away. And then hopefully be the number one seed in the Region 8 tournament. Liamucci continues the run. He's been lively yeah. since this come on. The man from N slash A. Three and a half. I'll make him come get it. Smith to Shields. The left side. A lot of space to operate. Everybody has time on the ball now. Yeah. Hurting. And off the ball. Foul given. I don't know if I would have maybe played the advantage there. Pull it back. It will be free kick from a good distance out. Yeah. 35 at least. It's one of those difficult positions. You don't know whether it's a tight cross and probably so just too far to shoot. Yeah, it takes a little bit of 
for crossing it to get the angle right, to get the finesse right, is uh, is not easy. It's it looks like it's a shot. All about the time you spend on it on the training grounds. Yeah. Wonky oh. movement hits the post and then tapped in. No. Oh, it's on the oh. line and cleared away, and Broward could not buy a goal. Unreal as Dylan <laughs> tried to finish. Everything but putting but, it in. Uh, yeah. Oh, made a mess of it a oh. little bit there. Saved. Made, yeah, made hit amends two. for. <laughs> hit the crossbar, the post, post, the line, and out. One of those nights. Who is responsible for putting the coats of paint on that yeah. goal? They should be the MVP. And now, boy, a dangerous challenge here and a player down. And we'll stop the clock, of course, with about 90 seconds. Wow, nearly spoiling yeah. the shutout late. Yeah. I think a little bit of misjudgment there by Notre Donato. Okay. Georgian, the Frenchman, freshman, holding the back of his fine. leg. Don't know. Let's take another look at the, the exchange here. I think you just got picked. That's how close was it? Yeah, it's, remember, the ball has to go all the way over no, the line. It never no, did. Didn't, didn't. That's <laughs> unfortunate. you got to be kidding. <laughs> Dylan has been denied every which way. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> ball spins and bounces That's wherever it wants. It does. Clock stops, delaying the inevitable. The Titans will get the win. The final score line still may be up in the air. Lewis Dillon has his way. Does lead the team with three goals, has two assists on eight shots coming in. So that shot total well uh, closer to the 15 mark after tonight. And he's looked quite dangerous at times. Just hasn't had a lot of opportunities, but he he he's looks fairly composed in front of goal. He gets into good some goal good goal scoring positions. Uh, but, you know, as I say, the two centre-backs for, for the Titans have just been outstanding. Crowd continuing. They're seeing themselves yeah. on the Jumbotron. <laughs> Across the, the way. The rain stopped. Everybody's, oh, happy, everybody's again. happy now. Titans trying to put a f finishing touches here on a 4-0 shutout. Back across. And Ronaldo can only watch it. And that will eat up some of that time. Yeah. That will be a goal kick. Andre Denovi Diaz has had some good moments tonight. Well, if you're Munga Ekatebi going forward, you've got two games of the, the, the big one uh, coming against Daytona State at home. If Broward could win that. It could also help Eastern Florida. So you should be supporting them. Yeah. And I, I mean, I think they could come out of this game with some confidence in the second half. I think they've. They've done well. They've, they've they've hung in there. They've probably been <laughs> in possession-wise, perhaps a better team in the second half. But the um, the Titans still yeah. look much more dynamic and much more likely to Dangerous, score and have yeah. have created the far better chances. But you would look at the game and you would come away with, I think, um, some optimism despite the scoreline. Just catching up to it. I'll turn around. And get the edge. And the longer the stays in the corner, the quicker the game will end. And that should do it. They count it down to the ninth win of the season. Eastern Florida, a 4 0 shutout win over the Broward College Seahawks. So they get the win in conference play now, 4 and 1. We'll talk about it when we come back on WEFS.
Eastern Florida State College women's soccer team takes on the Daytona State Falcons live Monday at 6 on WEFS. Join local sportscaster Eric Kohler as he hosts Eastern Florida State College coaches and student athletes for a closer look inside Titan Sports. Produced in partnership with Florida Today, the weekly in-depth program covers the 11 Titans men's and women's sports teams through game footage and coaches analysis. Get closer to the action Thursday night at 8 here on WEFS. Well, the sophomore stars shine on sophomore night as they get a big hand at the, from the crowd here at Titan Soccer Complex. A 4-0 and a comprehensive victory for Eastern Florida State College. Final home game of the year. The goals from Alexis had two of those. Orsi Dodomo and Sigil Knight, all sophomores, helping pay the bills tonight for the Titans <laughs> as they move to 9-2 and two, and more importantly 4-1 and one in conference. Head coach is Oliver 12 Trees and I'm sure a happy man tonight especially for his sophomores. Oliver? Yes Jeff, thank you. Yeah, no, definitely a good night for the sophomores and uh, I thought Alexis was, was fantastic tonight especially in the first half until he, you know, he uh, got a little bit of a knock on that red card and then picked up a card himself for a little bit of uh, over exuberant celebration. But uh, yeah, good performance from the boys tonight. Yeah. Um, I thought, you know, the basis of, a, well, as well as your sort of dynamic up front and, and the pace and tempo you had, your two centre-backs, I thought, were outstanding tonight. They were. They didn't give them much of a sniff until, you know, the second half. So, yeah, no, they were really good. Reese, Reese Myers on the right-hand side and, and Owen Torkowski certainly didn't give them, give them many opportunities in the game. You know, it was difficult after the red card and in the second half, you know, the tempo slowed and, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't ideal. But, uh, you know, I guess the game was, was probably over at that point. You mentioned the, the cards, there were two red, I, th I think unofficially seven yellow. How do you manage a game like okay. that? That's, okay. It starts not only getting a stretch, but kind of you, you got those challenges that are sliding and it just a, uh, not really the easiest thing to deal yeah, with. Yeah, and obviously, you know, in the NJCA rules, you know, if you get a yellow, you've got to come out. So, you know, we had to do a lot of changes to the lineups, you know, so that the chemistry wasn't there in the second half at all. You know, really disappointed with, with the lad. Um, you know, for the bicycle kick, you know, poor decision from him uh, after already getting a yellow, you know, to go up for that bicycle kick. And, and so disappointing in that. But uh, apart from that, you know, we did what we could and, and did what we needed to do and get the three points and, uh, you know, seeing off Broward for this year. And going into the last game of the season, same as tonight, same sort of lineup, same system, same. I hope Emphasis. so, but you know, Coach JC might be watching, so you know, might, uh, <laughs> I'll have to keep my cards close to my chest on that one. But you know, obviously, with, with the red card yeah. from Max, you know, he'll be missing that game, so we'll have to reshuffle a little bit. But uh, gotcha. yeah, we certainly like how we're playing at the business end of the season, no doubt about it. All right, to get down to business with the sophomores, uh, we'll let you go celebrate uh, win number nine on the year. Oliver 12 3, thank you very much. Congratulations. Thanks, yep. Thanks, Tom. Well done. Let's take a look at the highlights from this one. Four goals in all. We won't show all the cards because we'd be here all night. <laughs> uh, and it was Alexis to start things off in the 10th minute. Yeah, again, you know, one of those dynamic breaks, a transition that looked really, really dangerous with the, the pace and the, and the mobility that they had. And a little later on, how about this again, ball in? Well, again, it, it came at the end of a really good patch of possession and as I say, somebody that's in great goal scoring form, fantastic first touch and a really composed finish. Just sets it up there, little side foot into the far corner, no chance for the goalkeeper. 15th goal of the season for us, he did Domo, then yeah. Rosary leaves it for Knight yeah. who comes in and cleans up. Yeah, great early cross, um, goalkeeper perhaps could have done a little bit better with the cross and then that ball when it comes back across the goal there, very difficult because the goalkeeper's going one direction, yeah. the ball's going in the other. Say, and then, back, you know, this is a classic uh, smash and grab. <laughs> classic smash and grab. Ball <laughs> over the top, <laughs> in behind. Really good first touch and a good early pass. You know, quite often players will delay that pass and allow the defender to get that extra yard back. But that early pass just uh, killed off the defence and a really nice composed finish. The brace for Alex Alexis as the Titans and now. And a kick at the goal, but yeah, the corner This flag. is what he was talking about. I don't know. Well, I mean, Tim Cahill for Australia, and uh, who also played in the MLS, 
you know, because over there, punches a corner flag. Is there, is there a difference? I don't know. No, it's at the discretion of the referee, right? Yeah. Some some like to follow those rules to a letter of T, but um, unfortunate. But still, uh, the two goals, that's what will be remembered here tonight on sophomore night for Alex Alexis, the sophomore out of Miramar, Florida. Well, it's uh, the common dominator, a 4-0 win in the home finale. They'll look to play ASA Wednesday to close out the regular season. Hopefully be back here for the Region 8 tournament. We'll see you here Monday for the women as uh, they uh, battle for their championship. That will come your way Monday here on WEFS. For Tom Sermani, Brian Foster, our producer, our director, John Bober, and our entire WEFS crew. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Jeff Radcliffe. Good night from Melbourne. We now return to our regularly scheduled program.